my I am. Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Well, brethren, um, thanks unto a dearly beloved brother and friend of mine, a dear brother of ours, um, the Lord. <laughs> This is not the video that I thought was going to be done today, but this is something that the Lord obviously wants me to speak about with you today. And it has to do with the third temple, okay? And uh, we're going to be going, uh, like I said, a, a dear, dearly beloved brother and friend, hey brother, uh, last night sent me uh, some info on this, and... Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and we're, we're going to be going over this. Apparently, uh, there is a holy day amongst the Jews called, uh, about the month of Tammuz. And this fast for Tammuz, or about Tammuz, and we're going to look at this, began, uh, which was the new moon on the 28th, and it goes on to the 30th, okay? This is another one of these uh, man-made holy days, which gets all kinds of people into trouble. you got to remember, and this is pertinent for these uh, pagan uh, christ mast idolaters who, um, who will go to the Pauline epistles like, let no one judge you in respect of a holy day. Okay, listen. When Paul makes mention of a holy day, it's in reference to unto the holy days given within the scriptures, not some pagan man-made holy day, okay? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks. Hey, and for those of you who were innocently about this, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about basically a select few people who call other people lost because they want to, because they're telling the truth about Christ Mass, okay? Same thing. This is kind of similar to this, okay? This is kind of similar to this. People, the Jews making a holy day out of something that does not line up with Scripture. Okay? But you're going to see it kind of does. Okay? And remember, remember, Paul, when he's talking about holy days, he's referencing the holy days given in Scripture. Okay? Not talking about your pagan little Christ mass, okay? You got to remember that. Paul, holy day, okay? Holy day. Days appointed by God in scripture. That's what he's talking about, okay? But, all right, now enough of that. I'm going to read this uh, on to you, and we're going to look at a website, and we're going to be discussing today about the third temple. And we're also, we've, uh, we've talked about this at length before, there will be many um, uh, videos for you to look at in the description box where we talk about that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, and also about the, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble, kingdom of heaven, and that kind of stuff. There will be lots of links in the description box for you to consider. But what we have to remember, brethren, for the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, we have to remember this. You and I, if you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, guess what, cousin? We're not going to be here for it. Okay? We are not going to be here, you and I, church of the living God, those of you who are saved, born again, converted, truly saved, truly born again, new creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? You and I, we're not going to be here. We're not. Okay? We're not going to be here. The book of Revelation, doctrinally, doesn't apply for us today. Okay? It doesn't. Oh, there's a lot of instruction you can, in righteousness that you can uh, arrive from the book of Revelation, especially the first three chapters. Okay? But, doctrinally, it has nothing to do for, with us for today within this dispensation. You have to remember that. Okay? And there's a lot of things, I mean, we know what God tells us through the scriptures. There are still certain things that we do not know. And we can't know. Because that is for another dispensation. 
the time of Jacob's trouble, which begins after this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, is over. And this dispensation ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Now, we can have, there are things we can understand, but you got to remember, the time of Jacob's trouble is not for we, the body of Christ, the church of God. It's for the Jews. Okay? you got to remember that. You have to remember that. Okay? Because you, you can get, you know, you can get sidetracked by worrying too much about, you know, what's going to happen during the time of Jacob. We are here, we are to warn the lost. It's like, hey, you see, this, you know this time coming? You don't want to be here for that. Okay, that as we as the church of the living God, that's what we are supposed to do as ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay, that's what we are supposed to do. But you've got to remember, you have got to remember, we're not going to be here for it. Okay, and you, you, yes, you, you don't have to be here for it either. Okay, Matthew chapter 24, Enduring to the End, that's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. We're going to get into that, okay? But, enough of my, blah, 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 blah. let's get to this. Now, this was a screenshot that uh, my dear brother sent, sent me from Wastebook, okay? From the Temple Institute, okay? And it wasn't 26 minutes ago, that's when he was sent it. But l let's look at this. Rosh Choresh Tamu. The new month of Tammuz. Tonight, meaning the 28th, begins a two-day Rosh Kodesh new moon month celebration ushering in the month of Tammuz. Wishing everyone a very good month. Kodesh Tov. The picture now... We, we don't see... We don't have the picture because there's just like a little inkling of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I asked the brother before I started doing this, you know, hey, could you send me the link? And he sent me the link. It's like, I can't use it because I don't, I'm not on Facebook. But the picture depicts the first temp, the first holy temple. King Solomon had 10 additional menorahs and 10 additional shoebread tables built and installed in the holy temple. The picture, which we do not have, for illustrative purposes shows Choneum kindling the menorahs, placing shoe, shoe bread loaves upon the tables, and offering incense upon the incense upon the golden offer. All at the same time, in reality, each of these tasks daily, in the case of the menorah, that is the candlestick, okay, and incense, and once weekly on Shabbat, Sabbath. In the case of the shoe bread, were all performed at different times in the service. Okay, so that that uh, yeah yeah. But this thing about new moons, the month of Tammuz. Okay, tonight begins a two-day Chosh Chodesh new moon month. Hmm. This is something that was instituted of man. Derived from the from one of the versions of the Talmud, I think it's the Jerusalem Talmud. You got to remember, a lot of the Jews today, and these are not the Black Hebrew Israelites. You're not Hebrews, okay? A lot of the Hebraic people, the Jews that are in Israel right now today, their Judaism is not a scriptural Judaism, loosely based upon the scriptures, absolutely, but loosely. Loosely, but the Judaism that is in Jerusalem today, right now, is based primarily upon the Talmud, the Talmud, which is the uh, rabbinic writings thereof. The Talmud is the equivalent of the Roman Catholic Catechism. Okay, and there are two versions of the Talmud. There is one for the esoteric. Okay, for those the Jews that are the in crowd, okay, and one for the goyim, the goyim, those of the nations, Gentile. If, if you've ever ha had any experience with the Jewish people before, you will hear the word goyim. The word goyim means of nations, 
And unfortunately, when the Jewish people make mention of us goyim, it's always with a little kink to it. Kind of like a little, hey, you goyim, okay? This, this is true, okay? But there are two types and two versions of the Talmud. There is the Jerusalem Talmud and there is the Babylonian Talmud. I believe you are able to purchase the Babylonian Talmud for close to a thousand bucks off of christianbook.com. Okay? And the Jerusalem Talmud is the one that is used by the exoteric, uh, by the esoteric, excuse me, the Jews in the know. Okay? got to remember that. And also, too, uh, I think it was the Babylonian, I'm pretty sure it's the Babylonian Talmud that you can buy off of um, ChristianBook.com. The Jerusalem Talmud, uh, no. You have to be Jewish. You know, you, know, you, you have to be Jewish. But um, in the Talmud, it used to be written, and they have since expunged that, apparently. It was written that Jesus was in hell burning and boiling excrement? Okay? Yeah! 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 I mean, if you look that up online at original uh, productions of the Jerusalem Talmud, and it might have been in the Babylonian Talmud, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of what is being practiced today in Jerusalem, in Israel, by the Jews, is not scriptural Judaism loosely based incredibly loosely uh, based upon such but it is the majority of it is based upon the writings of the rabbis the Talmud and all their Kabbalistic magic stuff if you ever have read the book by uh, Eli Wiesel Knight which talks about uh, the mindset, the atmosphere of the Jewish people before the, the Nazi concentration camps and stuff, a lot of the same things that they were doing before, uh, before Hitler and the Nazi concentration camp kind of things, they're doing today. Okay? They're doing today. But this, right, this thing right here, new moon and month, Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. The King James Version, commonly referred to. Follow me along today. I don't care what you're doing, okay? Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we're going to be looking at, okay? Follow me along, all right? Check me out. Make sure I ain't skipping the groove. Make sure I ain't lying to you. Check me out, okay? But this, this thing about new moon, month. And Tammuz. Tammuz. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 20. And you got to keep this in mind with these man-made holy days, such as Christ Mass, a compound word, okay? And they go to, you know, let no one judge you in a holy day. The holy days that Paul is talking about are the ones that are in Scripture, man. Okay? You're a little pagan idolater. Okay? Buddy? Alright? But, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 20. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Okay? Book of Isaiah, under the dispensation of the law, being directly referred to unto the Jewish people here in this context. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? This, 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 this new month, this new month. This new moon, this new month, this thing, this three-day fast between the 28th and the 30th. Hmm. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. These man-made holy days 
is what our Lord is referring to. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. Oh, wait. God has a soul? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> Different subject. Let's continue. Yes. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead the widow. Okay, and what do we read? Verse 20. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. There is a difference between scarlet and crimson. Yes, they are both of the color red, but scarlet and crimson, the shades are a little different. Okay? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And today, like I said, Israel, the Judaism that uh, Israel is practicing today is incredibly loosely based upon scripture however it is more so based upon built upon the foundation of the talmud the kabbalistic stuff like i said the talmud is the equivalent of the roman catholic catechism okay you have to remember that okay but now let's let's look at this image here uh, there's not this image excuse me this uh yes we want to get rid of that okay this this, now i got to go to the browser here, bear with me, okay? This, Rosh Chodesh Tammuz 2022, start of the month of Tammuz on the Hebrew calendar, okay? And, okay, now here we got to go, beg your pardon. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here, and this is Orthodox Union, I don't have the link for this. Um, might be provided in the description box. We will see. But uh, Orthodox Union. Orthodox Union. And something about here around Lake Illinois. <laughs> okay, I'm nowhere near around Lake. But the month of Tammuz. And here they're co quoting scripture. Yechizigal. Uh, I forget it. It's Yechizigal. Uh, yes, Yechizigal. That's how they pronounce it. Yachisikal, 8.14. And he brought me to the entrance of the gate of the house of the Lord, which was at the north, which was at the north. And there were women, and there were their women sitting, bewailing the, the Talmuds, the Talmuds. You know the cross that Jesus Christ was uh, crucified upon? T for Tam Tammuz. Okay? Yes, dear friends, dear brethren, the cross is a symbol of Tammuz. Yes, that the uh, Lord chose the way of the cross. Yes, the cross is death. Yes, that is the way that the Lord has chosen. But what, how, how do you think the Romans came across, uh, came upon the T for Tammuz, the thing, and not, you know? Huh? Okay? But... Now they're quoting Ezekiel chapter 8. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 8. Okay? And he brought me to the entrance of the gate of the house of the Lord. And see, they omit the O. You'll see that with a lot of the Jewish writings. For example, you might have heard the or seen the thing Hashem. Ha is the. Ha. Uh, Hamashiach. Okay? The Christ. Okay? The Messiah, Mashiach, uh, Messiah, okay. Ha is the Shem. 
Shem, that means name. Ha Shem, the name. Okay? So when you see the Jews say Hashem, they're saying the name. But they're they're acting all reverent and holy while not accepting their true Messiah, their God, their Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You'll see that they will sometimes when you see the word God, they'll omit the O and put a hyphen. Just like they did there. They claim they do it for a sign of respect, okay? <laughs> But that's why, if you ever come up across some uh, uh, Jewish writings, you'll see Hashem. That means the name. You'll see God with no O but a hyphen there. Uh, they're doing that, they say, as a sign of respect. Okay. Tammuz is the Babylon, Babylonian name of this month, as are all of the official names of the month months in the Hebrew calendar. In the Bible, however... The month is referred to as the fourth month, with reference to Nisan, the first month. Okay. Biblical, <laughs> biblical significance of the month. As mentioned above, the name which came up from Babylon which with the Jewish people was Tammuz. In this case, consideration of the use of the name in Yech, in Yech, is, Yech Isikil, got to pronounce it right, would make it appropriate to say that the name Tammuz brought down brought down the Jewish people. And amen. The verse in Yach Isikel, cited above, speaks of the worship of a Babylonian idol known as Tammuz. Yes. And it seems most odd at first glance that this name would be chosen as the name of a Hebrew monk. However, however, in the context of the month that we are dealing with, a month of tragedies, tragedies, which would lead to still greater tragedies, the appropriateness of the name becomes clear. The prophet Yechisigal, Yech Yech excuse me, gotta pronounce it right, okay? <laughs> Trying to anyway, was being shown by, see, God, they omit the O, they don't put a hyphen in there, but they just put a line there. The reasons for his great anger against the Jewish people, namely the various forms of idol worship which had been adopted by them to replace the divine service. This behavior would result if the Jewish people, this behavior would result if the Jewish people would not repent. In the destruction of the once holy, but now desecrated temple. Okay, let's can, let's continue here. Okay, uh, 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 come on. Earlier biblical significance. We we read in the book of Yehoshua, Yehoshua, Joshua, ten eleven to fourteen, the battle of Yehoshua and the people of Israel against the five kings of the Amorite nation. In the biblical account, we find mention of great stones thrown, as it were, by God upon the Amorites. This could refer to hail, as the verse itself mentions, Yehoshua 10.11. We're not going to look at that. But in the light of the great astronomical miracle detailed in the following verses 12 through 14, in which the sun and the moon are pictured as having not advanced until the people of Israel had achieved complete victory. There is here the suggestion of a tremendous suspension of the paths in heaven, perhaps caused by a contact of the solar system with an intense meteor as asteroid showers. See, that definition right there of how they're, they're, they're like... They're, yes, they're admitting that God, they, they say, yeah, God, in the book of Joshua, yeah, it says that he did it, and yes, he did. But they're throwing that in as to say, like, well, there could be another, there could be another explanation. You see? You see? Whatever the case, according to Jewish tradition, this great miracle is supposed to have occurred on the 3rd of Tammuz. 
<laughs> Zodiac sign of the month. The sign, and the Jews require a sign, okay? The sign of the month is Sartan, Cancer, or the Crab. Because a constellation which is observed at this time of year has the appearance of a crab. Also, the season is summer, and the hot weather of summer causes crabs to multiply in the water. This is true. Crabs pinch and hurt, and this month was basically a time in which the Jewish people were hurt. This is the significance of why they are doing that. Crab, okay, Kodesh Tammuz in relation to the other months of the year. Nisan, uh, Layar, Sivan, Tammuz, Ev, Ilu, uh, Tishrei, Tishrei, I believe that is, Keshavan, Kislev, Tivet, Shavat, Adar. Okay? But, now here when they're talking about Yachisikil, Ezekiel, okay? Yachisikil. <laughs> Let's read Ezekiel chapter 8. Sorry for butchering that, that, uh, Yachisikil, okay? I, believe me, the you know, you talk to a Jewish person and they try to teach you how to say words in their tongue. They're, yeah, you're supposed to add that. But anyway, anyway, enough of that. Ezekiel chapter 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Yeah, yeah. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now, the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar this Image of jealousy in the entry. Image of jealousy. Okay. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, the hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. And you got to remember, in context of today, okay, Israel is not worshiping their God. Okay, they are not. Their God is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? They're promised Mashiach. Okay? They are not worshiping the true God. All right? They are not. That's hence the time of Jacob's trouble to bring Jewry, Israel, back onto the true God, their father, the Lord Jesus Christ, which eventually Israel is going to worship. Okay? Eventually. Eventually, yes, all Israel will be saved. Okay? Yes. We've got plenty of videos where we talk about that. Okay? Plenty. But let's continue. Okay? <clears throat> all right. Well, where did we left off? Okay? Uh, let's pick up at verse 10. At verse 9. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. We left off at verse 10. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazniah, the son of Shaphan, 
with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Incidentally, the 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, the um, heretics and uh, those who support that lying Septuagint, this is a verse that they will use about the Septuagint, too, about how the elders in Egypt and whatnot or something like that. Let's continue. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the, in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said unto me, He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Greater. Okay? Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. For Tammuz. Not bewailing the Tammuz. I don't know what translation is being used here, but I would bet you odds, great odds, that they were referencing the, uh, the Tanakh. The, by the Jewish Publication Society, the Tanakh translation. I would bet you that's what they're using, okay? But here the scriptures say, okay, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and he said, yes, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, bewailing the Tammuz. It's weeping for Tammuz. Yes. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. So there is something greater, a uh, greater abomination than the worship of uh, weeping for Tammuz. See, bew bewailing the Tammuz. It's weeping for Tammuz. Okay? God was showing Ezekiel the abominations that his people were doing. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, the temple. Okay? And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Baal worship. Sun worship. Okay. You know on the American dollar bill they have the, the symbol of Ra with the Masonic star and the all-seeing eye of Horus on the back of the one dollar bill. Okay. Their backs um, their backs were towards the temple meaning they turned their back on God and worshiping the sun. Okay. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have provoked and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. The seriousness of worshiping something that is not the true God. Especially by the apple of God's eye, which the Jew is. Okay? God is not done with his people. God is not done with his people. A lot of people like to say, well, God is done with the Jews today. No, he isn't. Remember, it is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Paul, in his ministry, he went to the Jew first. Okay? Even though he was the apostle of the Gentile. Okay? you got to remember that. God's not done with his people. Not by a long shot. But also, too, okay? So, the Jews right there, right now, from the 28th onto the 30th, there's a, a, a calendar right here. Oh, we don't need this up anymore. Okay? It's a calendar right here. This is a three-day fast. Okay? And this thing is a thing of man, not of the Lord. Okay? This is a holy day, a holiday created by man, not a holy day that is sanctified in Scripture. Okay? But 
What does the Lord have to say about that? We read about in Isaiah chapter 1 about the new moons. He can't do away with them. He's sick of them. You know, that's what God thinks about these man-made holy days. Okay? All right? But Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 on verse 7. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God, all the while wanting to worship God. Vanities. You read about that in, what is it, 2 Kings chapter 17, I believe it is. Yes, 2 Kings chapter 17. They, they feared the Lord, but yet they set up their own idols. They, they, they had an outward thing of fearing the Lord, but inwardly their, their heart was after their abominations, their idols. Okay, that's 2 Kings chapter 17. Read it, okay? Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? And we already looked in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 under verse 20. Uh, his soul hateth. He hateth this kind of stuff. Okay? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread, for, spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke, to get rid of all this heresy, to get rid of this false worship of a false god. Hmm? What a burden that must be. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, a lot of the Jews will do this kind of things. They will do the works absent of a heart that is for the true God. Okay? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. That's the kind of fast that the Lord has chosen. From a heart that truly is seeking the true Lord. Which unfortunately Israel at this time is not. Okay? It's not. But what about this third temple now? Okay, we had to address this. But the third temple, the third temple, okay. I have heard now we, we do not need this browser up any longer. Beg your pardon, okay. I'm not going to stop this and then try to combine them with the thing here. So we're just going to work off of, okay, there we go. All right. But. There's going to be a third temple built. And I have heard stories of, you know, that they're, they might be starting to build today. No. The third temple, I believe, is going to go on where the Temple Mount is. And right now, the Dome of the Rock is there. So, they, they are preparing for it. You look at the Temple Institute, they're, they're breeding the red heifer, getting ready. Okay? They're making many preparations for this third temple. Here's the thing. If the third temple were be beginning to be built today, number one, it's going to be going, I believe, on the spot where the uh, Dome of the Rock is, uh, the Muslims' temple. That has to be removed, okay? That has to be removed. And once that's removed, uh, all the Muslims, all hell going to break loose. They're going to go berserk, bonkers, nuts, crazy, okay? They're going to go crazy, all right? So... Are they building the temple right now as we speak? No. No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay? They, they have made many preparations for it. Unlike some people out there who believe that, using his uh, rhetoric, 
believe they'll take them years and years and years and years and years and years to build the temple. I disagree uh, vehemently. Okay? Remember, I personally believe, and I believe this is what the scriptures teach, okay, that the third temple is going to be built during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Because think about this. If the third temple were being, if, uh, number one, the, uh, the Dome of the Rock has to be out of here. Okay? N number one, that's still there. And if that were blown up and getting out of the way, the Muslims would be going nuts. Okay? So that's not happening today. Okay? Okay? But, let, okay, let's, hypothetically, hypothetically, Dome of the Rock is gone, and they, right now, today, June uh, 29th, 2022, they dig ground, they start building today. That would be the talk of the world. Would it not? Come on, that would. Even heretics, even heretics would be like, wow, they're built, they would have to, see, to pull off the facade that they are of the church of the living God rather than Christians, okay? No, different topic. But they would have to. That would be the talk of the world. It, it, it would have to. The third temple is being rebuilt, okay? That would be, that would be everybody, everybody, heretics alike, okay, would be talking about the third temple being built, okay? And plus, the third temple actually being built, um, we don't know when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. But with that happening, oh boy, we would be getting really, 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 really close. And everybody, everybody, if they were building the third, even my good friend from Blackpool, even he would be doing video. Oh, wow. Hey, they're building the third temple. Okay. You know, oh, wow. Pay attention to that. Okay. Even a guy like that would be making a big to-do about the third temple, okay? Hence, it's not being built right now, okay? I believe that it's going to be built during the time of Jacob's trouble. And then you got his holiness in Maine. It's like, it'll take him years and years. No, no. With all the preparation that the Jewish people have made to make this third temple, being backed by the Vatican, and hey, you're reading Genesis, okay? Genesis, when man gets together, what do they do? They build ziggurats, temples to heaven, to, to make a name of themselves. So the Jews will be backed by the Vatican. The Vatican will be being led by that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? So the Jews, which Israel, which is already in itself, in its own right, a wealthy nation, in its own right, being backed by the wealthiest of all nations, the Vatican, dude, they're going to get that temple up like no time flat. It's not going to take them years and years and years and years. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. No. Israel backed by the Vatican. Israel backed by the Vatican. They'll, they'll get that temple no time flat, man. No time. I'm guessing, realistically, uh, at the most, a year's time. Think about it. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he wants that. Satan, the Vatican, they want Jerusalem, they want Israel, so they can build the third temple to fulfill scripture for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to go into the third rebuilt temple to say, I am your God, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. So, naturally, after the redemption of the purchased possession, that man of sin, the son of perdition, gets revealed, okay, having the deep pockets of the Vatican. Come on, man. Come on. It's not going to take them years and years and years and years. No. No. They'll get that temple up quick. Okay? But about this temple. About this temple. Now, we've gone through this before. We've gone through this before, okay? Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Alright? Like I said, we, we have gone through this before, but we're going through it again. Okay? Daniel chapter 9, about this third temple. If the, <laughs> okay, the third temple is not being built right now. It isn't. Okay? Preparation for it. Yes, in that, in that sense, yes, there is building going on for the temple. Not physically, because it's going to go where the Dome of the Rock is. The Muslim big uh, holy place in Jerusalem, okay? Okay? But, 
Let's read about this. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Okay? Now, this is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, thy people the Jews, thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Now, looking at this verse, okay, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. The third temple, I believe from this uh, verse of scripture, this shows us that the third temple is going to be rebuilt in troublous times, the time of Jacob's trouble. And you got to look at it also, to build Jerusalem onto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks. Seven weeks, seven years, okay? Messiah, the Prince. When the Jewish people are allowed by that man of sin, the son of perdition, to offer animal sacrifices, okay? The law is going to be brought back into power, so as it will, if you, if you want to say it like that, during the time of Jacob's trouble, and the law is also going to be around during the kingdom of heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is all works, okay? All works, okay? Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, the animal sacrifices, to do it accurately, appropriately, are found in Scripture. So, for a short time, for about three and a half years, uh, at first, and it's not going to be a peaceful time because during those first three and a half years, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to do what? Going forth conquering and to conquer. There are these idiot heretics, a lot of them these free grace or nitwits, okay, saying, well, the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be peaceful. Shut up. That's nonsense. He's going to go forth conquering and to conquer during those first three years. But he, see, he's going to be doing it in the guise that he's doing it for the Jewish people. Okay, because you got to remember that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, he's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Hebrew. Okay, he is. Okay, he is going to be a Hebrew. Okay, you who get left behind, you watch. You have been told. Okay, but see, the animal sacrifices that the Jews are going to be doing during that for those uh, that period are found one place in the Scripture. So, so, in that respect, in that respect, the true way of this, the temple will be reestablished. Because they're, they're the only place, they're, I mean, they're not going to go to the Talmud on, for their animal sacrifices. They're going to have to adhere to the scriptures in order to do all the sacrifices and the ordinances right. So, during that first three and a half years, when the law is reinstituted, yes, Jewry is going to be adhering to the Old Testament principles of the laws of the temple. Yes. Yes. With their hopes to bring about their Mashiach. Okay? But lo and behold, Satan within that man of sin, the son of perdition, and I believe Satan indwells that man of, that man of sin, the son of perdition, after he is wounded, okay? At the first, he's going to be led by Satan, absolutely. But at some time, Satan himself, as with Judas Iscariot, when he received the sop, Satan entered into him. I believe that man of sin, the son of perdition, when he is wounded, that's when Satan is going to come into him because he's going to have a deadly wound and then he's going to come to life because Satan's going to enter into him. That's what I believe, okay? That's what I believe. So they're going to be they're going to be adhering to the scriptures for the temple laws and stuff at the beginning part of the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, Satan's going to mess it all up because he's going to be looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus, and he's going to go into the temple uh, midway through and say, "I am God." And then the Jews, the Jews that haven't, uh, you know, taken any of the mark or anything like that, there are Jews are going to be like, "Oh boy, we done messed up." We done messed up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now let's continue. Verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, okay, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. This is a question thing, because it's a capital M. You gotta remember, I believe that they are going to be worshiping in the temple according to the scriptures. Okay? Looking to bring about their Messiah. They are going to be worshiping in the temple, the third rebuilt temple, rightly according to the scriptures. Looking to bring about their Messiah, which already came. Okay? Old, old news. Okay? So, in that, they are worshiping correctly according to the scriptures to bring about their Messiah. So that's when you read, and after three score and two weeks, okay, three and a half years, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Notice prince is not the, uh, capitalized there. The people of the prince. Prince of the power of the air, perhaps? Okay. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And you read in Revelation 17, the waters that the horse sitteth on are people, nations, and tongues, and stuff like that. Waters of a flood, waters of people, uh, meaning many people. Okay? And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Okay? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, which Trump did not do a couple of years ago. Insanity. Okay? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Okay, they're going to be offering sacrifices and oblations according to the scripture. Okay. <clears throat> and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, also, also on this, also on this. Okay, let's go to Daniel chapter 7 about that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, Daniel chapter 7, just two verses uh, to start in Daniel chapter 7. Like I said, we've gone over this many times before, we're going over it again. Okay, Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 8. And after this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, see, what Catholics will do, uh, who deny, you know, yea hath God said, okay, uh, even the Jesuits by, Le uh, what was that guy, Leone, I believe his name was, uh, even the Jesuits admit that Revelation chapter 17 is talking about them. Even the Jesuits admit that, okay? Even the Jesuits know what the scripture says about themselves, okay? But what they will do to deflect to uh, pervert the word of God, they will say that a, this was already fulfilled. How? In Alexander the Great. Okay? They say it's already been fulfilled. It's talking about Alexander the Great. Uh, that's not the limit of the prophecy. Okay? Fourth kingdom. What is the fourth kingdom? Roman Catholicism. Okay? There's coming a fifth kingdom, yes, but the, the kingdom that we are dealing with today, right now, you know, the kin kingdom builders... Uh, that's Roman Catholicism. Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 27. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws... And they shall be given into his hand until a time and time times and the dividing of time. Thinking to change times and laws. Well, I he's going to come into the third rebuilt temple. It's like, hey, I'm your God that you're supposed to be worshiping. 
He's going to change times and laws. Okay. See, that's a, a heresy that the Bibles call that man of sin, the son of perdition, a lawless one. Yes, he's not going to be adhering to the law of God. That's true. But what he's going to do is he's going to make his own way. Ye shall be his God, knowing good and evil. He's going to establish his own laws. He's not going to be a lawless one. Yes, he's not going to be adhering to the law of God. True. But he's not going to be lawless. He's going to make his own law. Which all you lost people who, you know, you are your own God, knowing good and evil. That's what you do. You are your father the devil, see? Okay? He's not lawless. He will not adhere to the law of God. Yes, but he establishes his own law like the Talmud and the Catechism do. And like the Book of Discipline for the Methodist. And like the uh, Christian science thing. And like the Jehos. And like the Morons, the Mormons, okay? Let's continue. Verse 26, but the judgment shall sit. Okay, and what are we reading on to? Verse 27, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him, making reference unto the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 8. We're going to read verses 9 on to verse 14. Okay. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which exceedeth, which waxeth exceeding, which waxed, excuse me, exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Okay. And this uh, is talking you know, about the great horn out of the four horns. And the, see, the Catholics will say about the four people who tried to take over Alexander the Great's kingdom and stuff like that. Watch out for that. Yes, that was part of it, but the fulfillment of the prophecy is being, you know, is not just relegated to Alexander the Great. It wasn't finished. Okay? Be aware of that. See, that's that, that subtle, yea hath God said thing that Catholics do. Say, well, this is already fulfilled in uh, Alexander the Great. It's not fulfilled yet. Yes, that happened with Alexander the Great. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. But the prophecy in itself is not yet fulfilled. Okay? Let's continue. All right? We read, okay? And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. The daily sacrifice that they're going to be doing in the third rebuilt temple. Okay, this is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to magnify himself. And we're going to read uh, eventually here in Second Thessalonians when he comes into the third temple declaring himself to be God. Okay. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. And it practiced and prospered. Let's keep reading. Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? and the transgression of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So this is talking about that man of sin, son of perdition, going into the third temple, and he's going to take away his like, look, you don't have to do that anymore. Here I am. He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay, let's talk about the map, that man of sin, some perdition. Now go to Daniel chapter 11. Okay, Daniel chapter 11. We are going to be reading in Daniel chapter 11, verses 20 on to verse 26 to start. We're going to be reading on to verse 33, but we're going to hit some points here, okay? Daniel chapter 11, verses 20 on to verse 26 to start. Now, this is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition. 
This is talking about during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Which is not for the church. We, the church of the living God, get redeemed, the redemption of the purchased possession, before this comes about. Okay? But there's going to be a lot of you Christians left behind. Yes. Yeah, a lot of Christians are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. But the church of the living God is not going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Distinction. It's not subverting people, sir. Distinction. Okay? Let's continue. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Okay? Verse 21, we're going to go to, obviously. Uh, if you do not know, then follow along, of course. Uh, of course, I expect you to. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We want verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 5. If my fingers will get there. Yes. Yes, verse 21 in Daniel chapter 11 again. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 10. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, those who are truly saved, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, and the time of Jacob's trouble is wrath, okay? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession. When you get heretics like Mark the Messenger saying that uh, that, that uh, teaching Catholicism that you know well that never made sense to me. That's because you're a lying heretic. Okay, but when you got people like that saying that there's no redemption of the purchased possession, they are uh, uh, are adhering to their mother Roman Catholicism saying that Christians got to go through the Great Tribulation <laughs> when God hasn't appointed hath not appointed us to wrath. The time of Jacob's trouble is wrath. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, the redemption of the purchase, purchase possession, the blessed hope. Jesus Christ is the blessed hope, okay? Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, wake, be alive, or sleep dead, okay? We should live together with him. Now let's read verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Okay? We are not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The redemption of the purchased possession is quite scriptural. People disgustingly call it the pre-tribulation rapture. And yeah, right. Rapture is not in the scripture. You're right. You're right. The redemption of the purchased possession is. Okay? You don't have to go through this time that's coming, dear friend. Okay? Don't let heretics like Mark the Messenger, and I'm going to have to put that video in the description box because what we go through in that video is very pertinent onto this, using Mark the Mess as an example, unfortunately, okay? But you don't have to go through this time, okay? You don't have to. But you have to come to the Lord on His terms, okay? But let's go now back to Daniel 11, uh, verse 21 again. 
and in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably, saying, peace, peace, okay? And, sh and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood, arms of a flood, arms of a flood with many people, a small people, but many yet at the same time. Why? Because he's going to be flattering people, itching their ears, tickling their ears, you know, promising them good hope and a good future and riches and wealth and stuff like that, okay? Uh, with the arms of the flood, with many people behind him, the pockets of the Vatican, okay? Shall they be overflown from before him, and it shall he and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Well, right there, you said, Brad, with uh, many people, the arms of a flood, but shall become strong with the small people, the Jesuits. I personally believe that right there are small people. Yes, I believe that could be equated onto the Jesuit order. The Jesuits in number themselves are small, even though they run all of Catholicism. Catholicism is Jesuitism. Jesuitism is Catholicism. Okay? All right? Yes, there are many Catholics out there, but the Jesuits, the army themselves, you know, the guys with the dog collar, yes, the Jesuits, if you go to their college, they consider you a Jesuit. Okay? You're a lower level, kind of like with the... Um, with the Jews today, the proselytes. And, and see, this is another thing about these uh, stupid black Hebrew Israelites or the British Hebrew Israelites. Hey eh? there, cheerio, good chap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they want to adhere themselves to Judaism. And yet the Jews would not look at you truly, even though you join them yourself to them, they today, oh, you're, you're just a cute little goyim, okay? Even though in the scriptures, they were taught to look at them if they, you know, as, you know, don't be this way to a stranger or someone of another nation, especially if they join themselves onto the Lord, okay? It's, again, that goyim thing with a little kink to it, okay? Okay? The same thing with the Jesuits. Okay, these people who go through the colleges, the Jesuits themselves consider you a Jesuit, but you're not of the elite, the upper echelon of the exoteric, uh, excuse me, of the esoteric, okay? So let's continue. So, shall become strong with the small people, the Jesuits. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the provenance, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. Another verse showing us that, yes, that man of sin is going to be a Hebrew, son of perdition. He's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be a Hebrew, okay? And it's not talking about the Catholic priests. No, it's talking about his fathers, or his father's fathers have done. He's going to be a Hebrew. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be Jewish, okay? He is. You, you Christians who get left behind, got to endure to the end, <laughs> good luck, you watch. Okay, let's continue. He shall scatter them, uh, scatter them the prey, and spoil, and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. See, the first three years, yeah, he's going to get flatteries, riches, and all the stuff, but it's not going to be a peaceful time. He's going to be going forth conquering and to conquer, okay? And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the kingdom of, of the south, with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Verse 26, Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. Now, verse 24 again, and verse 26, He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Now look at that. Okay? 
He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil and riches. Verse 24. Verse 26. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Uh, watch it with these pages, Brad. Revelation chapter 17. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Revelation chapter 17. Verses 1. Where, where are we going to read? Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 15 in Revelation 17. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues with the arms of a flood. Okay? Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And of course, verse 5, And upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Today, that's Roman Catholicism. Okay? The rulers of the world are not going to Jerusalem to meet with the head rabbi. They're going to meet the puppet pope, Pope Francis, who is in con being controlled by Sosa. The head of Catholicism, the head of Jesuitism, the head of everything. Okay? That's him. All right? We'll talk about this in a video about you know, him being the king nothing. Okay? But uh, continuing. Okay? So, many nations are made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 24 in Daniel chapter 11. Yes. He, uh, in the middle of the verse, he shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and riches, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Okay? Now go to Revelation chapter 18. Okay? Revelation 8, chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18 talks about the destruction of Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Unfortunately, it's not going to be until the time of Jacob's trouble that uh, Roman Catholicism is destroyed. Destroyed. Why do you say, unfortunately, I want to see Roman Catholicism destroyed today. Anyone who is truly, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the Church of God, you want the same thing. You want to see Catholicism destroyed. But, Revelation 18, verses 1 and verse 7. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted, lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. From Catholicism. This is not talking about Jerusalem, okay? And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Okay? Something that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be offering, especially when he implements the, the mark of the beast. Okay? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Yes, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. A God of division, a God of separation, not to be like the world to win the world. That's nonsense, okay? Let's continue. Verse 5, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, the queen of heaven, Roman Catholic Mary. Roman Catholic Mary, not the Mary of the scriptures. Roman Catholic Mary! The Roman Catholic Mary is not the Mary of the Scriptures. It's the Queen of Heaven talked about in the book of Jeremiah. Oh, man. 
spit on that Mary. It's not the Mary of the Scriptures. That's Semiramis. Okay? Let's continue. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. And shall see no sorrow. Yeah. And over here in uh, Revelation chapter 17. <laughs> yeah. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. The colors of the Vatican. Uh, it's, a, it's a show. It's a distraction. People say the colors of the Vatican are white and gold. No, you look at the procession of, procession of the cardinals, the bishops and stuff like that. Purple and scarlet. Okay. It's not Iraq that's being talked about here either. Henry Morris said that. Henry Morris. Uh, a guy who talked great about creation. Uh, you know. But yet he botched it because he was in their pocket. You know, I, I showed that in the one video where we go through his study Bible, which was that thick that could stop a knife. Okay? Yeah. Um, uh, Henry Morris himself taught that it was actual Babylon and it wasn't Catholicism. Someone telling you that this mystery Babylon is number one America, oh boy, or number two actual Iraq, uh, they're heretics. Stay away from them. This is talking about Roman Catholicism. Babylon is not America. And it's not talking about the actual Babylon of Iraq. This is talking about Roman Catholicism. Okay? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and duck, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered in, with great admiration. And in Jerusalem, they're not drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. Oh, they, yeah, they've put to death few, yes, but nothing like the Saint Bar, uh, Saint uh, was it Bartholomew's massacre? Okay, nothing like when you read in the book of Fox of Martyrs, which I have to reread that again. Uh, I I didn't read that one last year. I have certain books that I read once a year, like the Sacrita Monita, the Art of War. And I didn't read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Got to read that again. Sorry for that rabbit trail. Back on uh, topic. Okay. <laughs> but yes, it's Roman Catholicism who have killed millions of the Church of God. Millions. Millions. More so than any other nation. Okay. we we'll go back to Daniel chapter 11. Okay. Daniel chapter 11. Picking up now at verse 27... On to verse 33. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. And at the time appointed he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Kittim, shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. An arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place, okay, pay attention, the abomination that maketh Desolate, the of definitive article, abomination that maketh desolate. That is a title, okay? That is a title. That is not talking about a statue that they're going to put in a temple. That is a title of what? That is the title of a man. The Antichrist. Find it. Find the Antichrist in Scripture. The Antichrist. The Antichrist in Scripture. Find it for me. Put it in there. That's a trick question. It's not in there. It's not in there. 
Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> striving about words is no profit, huh? The Antichrist is not in here. Okay? That's not words no profit. Let's get back to the scriptures there, buddy boy. Okay? The abomination that maketh desolate. That's the title. Let's continue. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. You know the mark of the beast? Hey, hey, take my mark. Go ahead. And you, the whole world is your candy shop. Flatteries. Soul, sell their soul for money, basically. Okay? But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now look at how that verse is broken up. Okay? He will, through flatteries, those who uh, do wickedly against the covenant. Okay? Who want to worship that man of sin, the son of perdition. Who's going to be claiming himself to be God, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. But those who know their God, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Denoting those people, who, those Jews who are like, th th oh, oy vey, oy vey, we, oh. While other Jews, unfortunately, it's like, hey, yeah, I want the best that you got to offer. Give it to me. Hence, damning themselves to hell. Okay, you see that, how that's broken up? The ones that are going to go for that man of sin, the son of perdition, and those who know their God, realizing we've messed it. It's so sad that Jewry has to go with, through what they're going to go through in order to come onto their Mashiach. It's, it's, it's sad. And yes, I know, truly saved, born again, converted Jews today of the Church of the Living God. I do know, yes, because it's to the Jew first. And also to the Gentile. Greek is a Gentile, okay? Gentile, Greek, you know, someone who is not a Jew, who is not of Jewry, who is not a Hebrew, okay? okay? There are those of Shem that are Gentile. Yes, yes. Because remember, the Hebraic line is from Shem, okay? Talked about that at length also, okay? Just so you, so you know, okay? But that's talking about two people, two types of people. One that are going to follow that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the ones who are not during the time of Jacob's trouble. After he reveals himself, hey, here I am, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by famine, famine because they didn't take the mark of the beast, by captivity and by spoil, and by spoil many days. Yeah, because when Jewry those Jews reject him. Rightfully so. It's like you're not a, you're not whoa whoa whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on, also on verse 31, okay? An arm shall stand on his this is talking about a man. The abomination that maketh desolate. That's the title of a man. Not the Antichrist that does not appear in Scripture. Okay? The, in front of the word Antichrist, does not appear in Scripture. Okay? You can't prove that wrong. Because that's how it is in Scripture. It's not like that in Scripture. Okay? But, okay? And arms shall, and arms shall stand on his, a man, his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. Hey, here I am, I'm God, Okay? And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Why isn't it capitalized? I don't know. I don't know. But now, go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Okay. Matthew chapter 24. <laughs> this, is, this is a mistake that is made by so many because they do not rightly divide the word of truth. You, we talk about this with that heretic Mark the Mess and uh, uh, rightly dividing, okay, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. You think that Christians are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, or go through the Great Tribulation. Church of the living God is not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. But yes, Christians are going to go through the, uh, the Great Tribulation. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. Today, in this dispensation, people, you do not have to endure to the end to be saved. Because if you are saved, you are once saved, always saved, eternally secure, going to heaven, regardless, okay? You can make a royal mess of your life. 
Yes, and destroy your testimony and shame the name of our Lord and shame Him. But if you're truly saved, born again, converted, you're going to heaven no matter what. Once saved, always saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? We don't have to endure to the end to be saved. Those during the time of Jacob's trouble have to endure to the end to be saved. They got to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. They take the mark of the beast and they're going to hell. They have to endure to the end to be saved. This is not for us today. Please understand that. Oh, I mean, I mean, you look at the comments on that video of, from Mark, about Mark the Mess. Nobody's rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise the Lord for those of us who do rightly divide the word of truth. Because if you don't right, re, rightly divide the word of truth, hey, there's Mark the Mess. Give him a hundred bucks and you'll get his praise, the praise of men. Oh, pick your part. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 18. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Again, this is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Not for us today. Please understand that. Okay? And this gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, where Christ is ruling and reigning, is going to be the gospel preached during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? There will be heretics at the first, the Christians that get left behind to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, like his whole, not his holiness, excuse me, not his holiness, but the, um, the Grand Inquisitor from New York, from Queens, unfortunately he ain't going to make it. But his type, the easy believism heretic, saying it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. Once we get redeemed and caught up, these easy believism heretics are going to be saying, just believe. You're sealed until the day of redemption. You know, don't worry about it. Just believe. Take the mark of the beast. Psh, they're going to hell. Okay? And they're going to be preaching that just believe gospel during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Why? To deceive many people and to damn them to hell. Okay? That's why. That's why. you got to remember, the religion during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be extreme Roman Catholicism. That's going to make pre-Vatican II look like nothing, okay? Which ought to make some many of you heretical Catholics, which all Catholics are heretics, um, ought to make you Catholics happy, who are looking, you know, want to get away from uh, Vatican Council II. <laughs> yes, yes. And this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which will be coming immediately after the time of Jacob's trouble. So, naturally, logically. The gospel that is going to be preached during the time of Jacob's trouble is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven that will be coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Okay? You read about that in Revelation chapters 13 and 14. Okay? Which heretics like Mark the Mess take out of context. Okay? It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the mark of the beast... Boom! You're going straight to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Don't believe Breaker, Kim, cut or John MacArthur, cut off your hand or gouge it. No, no. Okay. Let's continue. And this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Okay. That's the gospel that you know that's going to be coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see. The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Well, that's talking about a temple. No, we saw in uh, Daniel, well, let's go back there. We saw that important word that you're not going to, you can't skirt around. You can't get away from that. Okay? That word, one little word, his. Okay? You, you can't get away from that. Daniel chapter 11, verse 31 again. If I'll get there, I'll close the scriptures. Okay? An arm shall stand on his part. We already read the context. It's talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition. So when our Lord says here, When ye see, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, 
Whoso readeth, let him understand. Also, let's drive this home in Mark chapter 13, verse 14. Okay? This is not talking about an, an idol statue or anything. That is the title of a man. It's talking about a man. Okay? That's what our Lord is talking about. The abomination that maketh desolate. It's talking about a man. That is the title, one of the titles, for that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 14. Mark chapter 12, verse 14. Uh, wait, 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 Mark chapter 13, verse 14, excuse me. Mark chapter 13, verse 14, beg your pardon. Mark chapter 13, verse 14, beg your pardon. Mark chapter 13, verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, standing where it ought not, it says it, it doesn't say anything about a he. In context, we already looked at it. It is talking about a man. And the Lord is refer referring to him as an it. And that's something interesting, yes? Standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee in the mountains. Go back to Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Verse 16 in Matthew chapter 24. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. In Judea. What are all these so-called Christians going to be all doing in Judea? Let him which is upon the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And what are we reading to? Yeah, and that was it. Okay, why? Why this sudden urgency? It's like you say, when you see that, you know, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not... It's talking about a man. We already read the context in Daniel chapter 11. Okay, why? Because when the Jews realize, oh, wow, he's going to be a little angry. The urgency is like, whoa, that guy's claiming to be you. He's not you. Oh, wow, let's bolt. Get out of here right now. The urgency, the terror of the flea is like, that, that guy, oh, wow, those, those of the church of the living God who read to us the goyish, yeah, I've heard that. Goyish King James Bible, okay, were telling us the truth the whole time. Wow, what a concept. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been told that by a Jew before, a Hebrew, you know, who, who said to me, you know, you're, you're Goyish King James Bible. Yeah, there's a reason why God chose English as the end times language. That was the video that I thought was coming today, but... Thanks to a dearly beloved brother. No, not for today. But see, the urgency upon the Jews when they realize, oh boy. That's why he says, then let them which be in the Judea flee unto the mountains. Run for your life. Run for your life. And they're going to. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. The urgency. Kind of like when Lot was taken by the hand and brought out. Okay, it's like, come on, never mind, you're messing around, come on, let's go. It's going to be like that. Get out, okay? And now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, of course, verses 1 on to verse 4. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination of desolation, okay? Those are titles for that man of sin. Why is that not capitalized? I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. Okay? Also, you're going to see the Son of Perdition is not capitalized either. Okay? Those are titles. Actual scriptural titles for that man of sin, the Son of Perdition. Okay? Erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. But, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, lowercase s, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. What is the falling away? Well, let's look at that. The falling away is perfectly 
um, describe for us in 1 John chapter 2. In 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Uh, verse 19, uh, verse 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist, know thee, shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are many Antichrists today. Okay. Uh, verse 3 in Second Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you. By any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh, first John chapter two verse nineteen. Now, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That is the falling away. Okay. This is not talking about those who are of the church of the living God who get messed up in error and heresy, which can happen. You read the books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Okay, there you go. No, this is talking about those who uh, claim to be of us, but as time goes on, they're revealed, no, they ain't of us. They ain't saved. They're pagan idolaters. Yeah. Worshiping their own selves or whatnot. Okay. That is the falling away, and that is happening. And the closer we get to the redemption of the precious possession, you're seeing it. So many of these so-called Christians, and I'm not a Christian, I'm of the Church of God, okay? Um, so many of these people are falling away. Why? Because they were never of us to begin with. They're Christians. Let's continue, okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, that's happening. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, be and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that man of sin be revealed. Okay? Now, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. Hence the Jews, when this guy comes into the third rebuilt temple, and they see that, they're going to be like, oh, and they're going to have to bolt right away, okay? So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The temple. There is no temple today. Oh, there are little uh, synagogues, yeah. <laughs> but the, the temple that you read about in Ezekiel, that, that's, that's the temple that's being described in Ezekiel, by the way. Okay? Um, and in Ezekiel 40, on the verse 43. Okay? Um, yeah, there's going to be a third rebuilt temple. Hence, for the whole purpose, for that man of sin, the son of perdition to come in, that's why the Jews are going to be able to build that thing so quickly during the time of Jacob's trouble, because that's what the Vatican wants. And the Vatican's pockets are deep. Are deep. Okay? Okay? And and let's and let's read here verses seven and eight. Okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, letteth means to hinder, will let until he be taken out of the way. Verse 7 is talking about the redemption of the purchased possession. The he who now letteth will let. He, the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the church of the living God, is on the earth right now. Hence, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that make it desolate, that man of sin, the son of perdition, cannot be revealed. Why? Because we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the church of God, is on the earth. Okay? Our presence here is letting. Because he will not deny himself. Okay? We are his bones and his flesh. He will not deny himself. He will not hurt himself. We are his bones and his flesh. Of his bones. Of his flesh. Okay? While we are on the earth, that man of sin cannot be revealed. Okay? Only he who now letteth will let. It's not talking about the Lord. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. God, God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. He's everywhere. Okay? He's not going anywhere. The he is talking about we, the church of the living God. Again, those of you twits out there 
it's, it's post tribulation. Shut up. Shut up. It's the redemption of the purchased possession, by the way, and it's that's what the scriptures teach. Okay? Again, you gotta go you're gonna have to watch the, the video on Mark the Mess. We talk about that. But okay. And okay, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, be taken out of the way, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? And then, shall that capital W, wicked, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, his second coming, Okay? We need to be redeemed, then that matter of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Okay? If the temple were being built today, even heretics, that would be the talk of the world. Okay? That would be. Alright? That would be. And yes, the Jesuits control the media and everything. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But that would be the talk of the world. Wicked Hans scum, Jesuit coadjutor, heretics would have no choice but to speak about it. It's not being built today. It's not being built today. It's being built in the sense of it's being prepared for. But the actual, you know, they got to get rid of the Dome of the Rock. You know, the, the thing, with the Muslim thing, where the uh, temple is going to be. Okay? All right? I know some like to argue, well, no, that's not where it's actually going to be, and blah, blah, blah. Like I said, like I said, big part. We are, we today are not going to see these things. And if they were building the temple today, if they were, uh, time would be, that would be, yeah, yeah. That would be like, oh boy, oh boy. Because if they're building the temple, Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. And in Revelation chapter 11, we see in Revelation chapter 11, just verses 1 and 2, that there is a temple during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. Uh, Revelation 11 verses 1 and 2, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Okay? Forty and two months. Alright? And I believe forty and two months, that's three and a half years. Okay? Alright? And of course, this temple that is in during the time of Jacob's trouble, in the book of Revelation... You do not read anywhere where the temple, the third temple, is destroyed. Hence, bringing up the argument or the question, well, is there going to be a fourth temple? No, no. You do not read in the book of Revelation anywhere of the destruction of this third temple. One can assume, because of the violence of that time, and with the, all the devastation and destruction of that man of sin, the son of perdition, the son of perdition going forth, conquering and to conquer with the wake of devastation, one can assume, and what? And you break up the word assume, what does that mean? What is the assumption? The mother of? Okay. But one will assume, well, with all that destruction of that man, of, of that son of perdition, the abomination that make it desolate, goeth about to destroy and conquering to conquer, well, why not, right? Well, why not? Because we read in Revelation chapter, what is it, 21, that there is no temple there, so it might have been destroyed. you you got to remember about Re Revelation chapter 21. That's the beginning of the seventh and final dispensation where there is no sin. Remember, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, but uh, let's let's go to Ezekiel chapter 43. Read Ezekiel chapter 40 on to verse 43. That is the temple that is being described of the time of Jacob's trouble. Not the one that was built during the time of, uh, of Jesus. Prove that to you. Okay, that's the one that uh, they built uh, for Nehemiah's time and Ezra's time. 
That's not this temple that's being described in the book of Ezekiel from chapters 40 on to verse 43 throughout uh, through the later chapters of the book of Ezekiel. That is the temple that is going to be built during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that's this temple. And it's going to be built quick. Okay, but Ezekiel chapter 43 verses 7 on to verse 12. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne, okay, the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Talking about when Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ sitting and ruling on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? At Jerusalem. Okay? In their setting of their thresholds by my thresholds, and their posts by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in mine anger at the time of Jacob's trouble. Now let them put away their whoredom and their carcasses and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou, son of man, shew the house to the house of Israel. The house. What is that talking about? The temple. Okay? That they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they have and if they be ashamed of all that they have done, shew them the form of the house and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight, that it may keep the whole that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinance thereof, and do them. Now during when this was rebuilt during Nehemiah and Ezra's time, was the Lord uh, sitting on a throne at that time? No. No. I mean, <laughs> come on. Come on. Even if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, find me in Nehemiah and Ezra where the Lord is sitting on a throne. Oh, he's in heaven. That what we just looked at is referring to him actually physically ruling, sitting on a throne. Our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The temple that is being described in the book of Ezekiel, Yechzekiel, okay? From verse, uh, chapters 40 and 43 and thereon, okay? Is not the temple that was built in Ezra's time or Nehemiah's time. That is the third rebuilt temple, okay? But now... What about this? Okay, what about this? In Zechariah chapter 6, and this is what sparked this video because in the comments that the thing that uh, my dear dear brother sent me, this was mentioned. It's like that the Mashiach is going to build the temple. But yet we don't read anything in the book of Revelation. Find it for me, please. My brother from Croatia, he, he, he himself, you know, he himself. You're, you're not going to find anywhere within the book of Revelation, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble, you're not going to find anywhere where the temple is destroyed. The only way people come about that idea that the temple is destroyed is because of the dis destruction, you know, of, uh, of that man of the son of perdition and stuff like that. They assume that the temple is destroyed. And also when they talk about Revelation 21, which we're, we're going to get to that. That's a different dispensation though. Okay, And you've got to remember, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back with us, okay, His, you know, us who were redeemed, once he comes, he ain't going anywhere. Okay, What ends the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is going to show man how an actual kingdom is run, okay? But that does not end in and of itself, meaning that Christ ruling on earth. What happens is Satan is loosed out of his prison. Yes, after the thousand years. Because you got to remember, 
during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, there's still going to be sin. Okay? There's still going to be sin. There's going to be offerings made in the temple. We're going to look at the proof of that. Okay? Okay, yes. I mean, yes, he paid the price for sin. Yes, yes. But there's going to be peace offerings and stuff like that made because Christ Jesus was the lamb that was sacrificed to take away the sins of the world. And he's going to be ruling and reigning at Jerusalem. But there's going to be that during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. And we're going to look at the proof of that. But when we read in Zechariah chapter 6, Zechariah chapter 6, verses 9 unto the close of the chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, and, to the, and of Heldai, of Tobijah, and of Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Shephaniah, of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Build it. But yet, it's been, it was built during the time of Jacob's trouble. And in the book of Revelation, you do not read any mention of it being destroyed for him to build it. What, what, what is this talking about? Let, let's continue. I'm going to share with you what I believe this is talking about. Okay? Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he shall bear the glory. Remember that. Okay? And shall sit and rule upon his throne. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And the crowns shall be to Helam, and to Tobijah, and to Jediah, and to Hen, the son of, son of Sephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. So, so they're going to be building in the temple of the Lord. What does this mean? Okay, hold on. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Again, find me in the book of Revelation, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble, find me the destruction of the third temple. Find it for me. Please. Please. You're going to go to Revelation 21. That's the seventh and final dispensation. Okay? That doesn't apply. That doesn't work. Okay? Show me the destruction of the temple during the time of Jacob's trouble. So, so okay. What does this mean? Okay? I'm going to show you what I think this means. What I believe. Okay? Alright? And you got to remember. We're talking about future events that are to come. Okay? Doctrinally, that don't apply for us today. Alright? I am sharing with you what I believe this is saying. Okay? And you got to be careful about arguing about this. Okay? You got to be careful. Because we of the Church of the Living God, we are not going to be going through this time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You Christians that get left behind, going through the, you're going to be going through this time. Okay? But you got to remember that, like we stated at the beginning. But let me show you this. Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 50. And, and this is talking about in this dispensation. Okay? Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Okay? And what is he referencing? He is referencing Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And while I spake of that, let's go to Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Okay, 
This, this is what uh, Stephen, before they kill him, uh, this is what he's talking about. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and that trembleth at my word. Okay, that's what he's referencing. Okay, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. But we, we read in Ezekiel, okay, and in Zechariah, about him actually being on earth. Yes, ruling and reigning during the kingdom of heaven. Yes! Okay? Okay? Yes! Yes! Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, this is for this dispensation today. Okay? This dispensation today. This dispensation, when you come to the Lord on His terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow, it's your fault, and in fear of Him, you call upon His name and He save you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. The day of redemption. The redemption of the purchased possession. The, okay, the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. Okay? There is no temple today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. No, and this is doctrine for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, in the Pauline epistles. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man, your enemies, or you, you yourself, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And then you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, if you're not saved, your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? And you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, there is no eternal security. There are 144,000 Jews, Hebrews, that will be sealed. Okay? Yes. Hebrews. 144,000 Jews, which Hamites are not, with us, us Japhethians are not, and those also, certain of those of Shem are not. Okay? you got to remember that. But those that derive from the Hebraic line, which has come from Shem. Okay? Yes, those will be... Big part. Those will be sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Everyone else, just like during under the law, the Holy Ghost will not be a permanent resident. Under the law, the dispensation of the law, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go during the time of Jacob's trouble. Same thing. And they're in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ, this is east. Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne. Okay? That's why it's all works during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Because it's wor it's works. All right? It's all works. All right, all right? Prove that to you. Okay? Well, first, before we get to that, okay, it's all works during the kingdom of heaven. We are going to read about that in Matthew chapter 5. Okay, which shows that there is also going to be a temple there. Yes, see, right now today, your body, if you are truly saved, born again, converted, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, Christ, our Father, dwelling within you. Okay, <coughs> during the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be a, the third temple rebuilt. But during that time, unless you're one of the 144,000 Jews, Hebrews, there is no eternal security. That's why you got to watch out for these idiots, and I'm being polite, these heretics who tell you uh, you're, it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Once saved, always saved. 
from Genesis on to Revelation? No. No. What makes a dispensation different is how someone is made right with God in that dispensation. Today, unlike any, any other, except for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's uh, trouble, today you are saved, once saved, always saved, sealed. The 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble are sealed, eternally secure. Everyone else? No. No. The Holy Ghost is not a permanent resident. During the kingdom of heaven, the Holy Ghost won't be a permanent resident. Why? Because Jesus Christ himself, God who is our Father, the Godhead is Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Soul, God the Father, Body, the Word made flesh. Okay? It's going to be the Godhead. It's going to be on earth. Okay? So, you're not going to, the Holy Ghost is, no. It's because, why? Because it's works. Okay? It's works. Pure works, just like it was during the um, during uh, the very first dispensation uh, in Genesis. Works. Don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of the tree. Works. Okay. But go to Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter five. You got to remember. Okay. Today, Ephesians chapter five, verses twenty nine on to verse thirty. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? And John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Right here. I believe this is what sums this up. Because clearly in the book of Zechariah it says, He will build the temple. But yet, you, you, you don't read of anything about the temple being destroyed. You don't find that. You don't. What's this talking about? I'm gonna t this is what I believe this is talking about. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay? So be it. So be it. This doctrinally does not apply for us today anyway. But this is what I believe this is uh, what, what Zechariah chapter 6, verses 9 under verse 15 is talking about. John chapter 2 Verses 18 on to verse 22. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Okay, What signs shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. And wilt thou wear it up in three days? Now, it took 46 years for them to build that temple before, okay? And I and yes, I believe with the pockets of the Vatican, they'll get that thing in up in under a year. Absolutely, I believe that, okay? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. He spake about the temple of his body, okay? The temple of his body. But now go to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, okay? Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, okay? We want, want verse 16 on to verse 19. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16. On the verse 19, okay? Uh, where, where was that? Where was that? Where it says, um, he will make the law. Oh, okay. We, we got to get to that yet. Okay. Because we read that he will make the law honorable. Okay. That the Lord, he's going to make the law honorable. So when he's talking about in Zechariah chapter 6 here, Verses 9 on to verse 15. We are, yeah, that's in Isaiah chapter 42. Uh, when we read about how the Lord is going to build, the Messiah is going to build the temple, but you don't see anywhere in the book of Revelation the temple being built. The kingdom of heaven is God himself sitting on the throne, showing man how a true kingdom is to be built, be run. In him building the temple, 
I don't believe that's talking about him literally building the temple, but building it, showing how it is to be actually run, uh, operated with God sitting on the throne. Meaning building it up in righteousness, you know. Let's let's get to that because I have that written here after we look at Matthew chapter five. But in Ezekiel chapter forty-two, this is what I believe this is talking about. In Isaiah chapter forty-two, verses seventeen on to verse twenty-five, they shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf, and look, ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seest seen many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Make it honorable. Okay? But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom they have sinned? Okay? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, scriptural worship of the temple is going to be reinstituted. But, they are not doing it. They're, they're doing it to bring about their Mashiach who already came. So see, they're going to be worshiping God the right way but not worshiping the true God because at that time they, don't, they are not going to be believing on their Messiah who will be coming back at his second coming. So in that he will make it honorable, that is what I believe when it says here in Zechariah, chapter 6 about how he's building the temple when you don't read in Revelation that it's destroyed at all okay you don't read that it's destroyed at all in the book of Revelation the third temple no I believe that when he said when it's saying that he's building up the temple and they within it are building it up they are doing it right showing proper worship unto the Lord who is going to be uh, on the throne okay that's what I believe, the building up of the temple, that the Lord is going to show in that thousand years, he's going to make the law honorable, which, which you read about, uh, you know, in the book of Acts, they could not keep the law perfectly, okay? They couldn't, they couldn't, okay? And verse 25, okay? Oh, let's read verse 24 in Isaiah tw uh 42 again, who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. No one could keep the law perfectly. And guess what? During the time of the kingdom of heaven, sin is still going to be there. Hence, and the time of, uh, of the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign, is all works. Hence, okay, you get it. Now read verse twenty-five. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury, fury of his anger, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. Okay, so I believe what is being talked about in uh, Zechariah chapter six, when it says that the Mashiach. The Messiah will build the temple, meaning that he's going to be making the law honorable, showing, showing during that thousand years how to keep the law perfectly. But see, we as man, because sin is still going to be in that world, even though Satan himself is going to be bound, man is still sinful. Man is still sinful. Okay? Sin is going to still be there. Now let's read verse uh, Zechariah chapter, what were we going to read? 
verse four, uh, Zechariah 14, verse 16 on to verse 19. Okay? And it came to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Lord of hosts, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King, ruling on his throne. Okay, Feast of Tabernacles shows us that the law is going to be there during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And it shall be that whoso will not come up at of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Showing that during the kingdom of heaven, no rain, no sustenance, no life. It's going to be farming during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be no the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So, okay, right there, verse 6 to 18 again, showing you, during the kingdom of heaven, works. Okay? Okay, he's going to, you don't come up to the Lord, worship the Lord. How are you going to worship during the kingdom of heaven? Maybe in the temple? Oh, I'm going to look at this, okay? All right? But there again, verse 18, showing that it's works during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And verse 19, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, by the way, buddy, is an actual scriptural holy day. Okay? You think during the kingdom of heaven that you're going to be doing Christ Mass? Yeah. Yeah. Try to pull that off during the kingdom of heaven. What's wrong with you? Pagan idolater. That's what you is, man. Oh, okay. But, but, during the kingdom of heaven, works. The law is going to be there in the Feast of Tabernacles. Why would nations be doing the Feast of Tabernacles if the law wasn't present there? Okay. What about this thing about the temple now? Okay. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter tw uh, Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 26. The Sermon on the Mount is all works. O ye of little faith. Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. Why? This is the Constitution. This is how it's going to be during the Kingdom of Heaven. Okay? Doctrinally, this does not apply for us today. Instruction and in righteousness, amen. Doctrinally, no. This does not apply for us. This is for the Kingdom of Heaven after the time of Jacob's trouble. But we're going to read here verses 21 on verse 26. Ye have heard that it was said by them in Matthew chapter 5, Of old time thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Yeah, because they're going to have to deal with the Lord personally. Okay? But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, okay? Your Bibles take out without a cause, making Jesus a sinner when he's angry. Yeah, yeah. You, you see why I'm so adamant about the distinction between a Bible and Scripture? That says Bible. Yes, it does. But within the pages, it doesn't call itself that. Don't with your little, yea, hath God said, oh, but Scripture is in the Bible. Just do it. Just, that's, yeah, that's cute. Shut up with that. What's wrong with you? Okay, what's wrong with you, man? Uh, but anyway, okay? But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, okay, shall be danger in the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Recha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Why? The law is going to be instituted. It's only works. And when you break the law, you're going to have to answer to the Lord himself personally. But then you're going to have to give an offering. A peace offering. okay? Because the offering for sin has been made only one time. okay? So what offerings? Peace offerings. Offering peace. They have uh, offended the Lord. okay? 
And when in a situation where there's only works, only works during the kingdom of heaven, so what happens when someone sins? They're going to have to do what? An offering. Therefore, verse 23, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Altar, offering thy gift during the kingdom of heaven. Where is that altar going to be? Okay? You get this? Okay? Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Okay, what does this show us? This shows us that during the kingdom of heaven, number one, it's works. Number two, the law is going to be instituted. This kind of proves it. And number three, the temple is going to be there. The kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? All right? Now, go to Revelation chapter 21. This is something that a lot of you might be saying, well, well, there's no temple there. Revelation chapter 21. Okay? Now, the kingdom of heaven, which is the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord reigning on earth does not end. But what happens? What happens? Okay? What happens? Okay. Uh, let's see. Revelation chapter 21. Okay. At the end of the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. But the rest of the day, behold, blessed. Okay. Okay. In Revelation chapter 20. Okay. The kingdom of heaven, the reign of Jesus Christ on earth doesn't end. What happens? During the kingdom of heaven, we just looked at it in Matthew chapter 5, okay? Remember, during the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone during the kingdom of heaven, you will not be forgiven. That's works. Today in this dispensation, you want to ruin your life, wreck your testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ, and hold a grudge against someone? That's your problem, okay? That's not going to affect your salvation. During the kingdom of heaven, you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be for forgiven works okay but what happens okay see during the kingdom of heaven there's still going to be sin but after the thousand years what happens uh, revelation chapter 20 verse 7 and when the thousand years are expired satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth gog and magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is is, is as the sand of the sea Okay? Why? Because man is sinful. Sin is still going to be in the earth during the kingdom of heaven. We just looked at it in Matthew chapter 5, an example of it. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven. Again, you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. Works. Okay? To say that if you don't forgive someone today, that you're not forgiven, that's heresy. Instruction in righteousness, yes. Yes. You're going to ruin your life, your testimony, and you're going to Cast shame upon our Lord if you don't forgive someone. But it doesn't affect your salvation during the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> yeah. You get it? Okay. And then in Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne. Oh. Okay. The great white throne. Okay. The kingdom of heaven in and of itself doesn't end. Okay. It, no, it doesn't. That's the sixth dispensation. Because God, as man, is going to be ruling on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? A lot of people like to equate the sixth dispensation as the time of Jacob's trouble. And they, uh, they, they say, well, and they say the same thing, that the kingdom of heaven in and of itself doesn't end. But yet there's still going to be sin. 
during the kingdom of heaven. And then Satan is going to be loose and go deceive people, okay? And then you read about the great white throne, okay? Verses 11 on to verse 15. And I saw a great white throne in Revelation 20. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And uh, the Lord had me to do a video about the three books, which uh, <laughs> three books. Write that down. That'll be in the description box if you have any questions. Okay. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And book of life. Book of Life of the Lamb, okay? Like I said, we, we got that three books thing uh, that I'll leave in the description box. Verse 14 is very significant. Why? Because verse 14, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The death of sin. Oh, where is that? Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, okay, the strength of sin is death. Okay? Sin will be destroyed forever with verse 14 okay hence ushering in revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea that first heaven and that first earth that was defiled the first earth especially by the curse because of sin there's no more sin hence the seventh and final dispensation of Scripture. Okay? How, and it doesn't end, but how is sin finally erad er eradicated? Verse 14 in Revelation chapter 20. Okay? Okay? After Satan is loosed. Hence, after Satan, sin is destroyed in the lake of fire. The final and seventh dispensation, no sin. A new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. A new heaven and a new earth. No more sin. No more sin. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 20, uh, 21, verses 22 on to verse 27. Okay? And I saw no temple therein. Why? Because the old has passed away. This is a new heaven and a new earth. There's no need of a temple. Why? Because you don't have to be offering sin offerings or anything like that. Okay? So, no. During the seventh and final dispensation, there's no sin. No need for a temple. Okay? Now, granted, the temple wasn't the only reason why there was a temple. But uh, and during the kingdom of heaven... The temple is just there for that. Because God is going to be on the throne. You're going to worship Him personally. Okay? By giving Him offerings and gifts and stuff like that. Okay? It's all works. During the seventh and final dispensation, I saw no temple therein. Why? For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And you got to remember, like it talks about in Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse 28. Okay? you got to remember, Hebrews chapter 9. Is, is this too much for you? I hope it isn't. Should have told you at the beginning of this video. This is me, not milk. Okay? But uh, yes. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 28. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of, the, of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true. 
but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others, which they did on Yom Kippur. Okay, which this also shows us that in that third temple, uh, during the kingdom of heaven, you're not going to be offering uh, uh, things for sin. It's peace offerings, because why? Jesus Christ already paid the price for sin. But what you are offering is, hey, you've sinned against God, peace offerings and that kind of stuff, okay? Okay? For then must he, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sin of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Okay? Now go back to Revelation 20, uh, 21. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. There's no sin, no need of a temple. See, from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, that pristine relationship when God was walking himself in the garden, God's original intent was to have this type of relationship, as you see from verses 21 on to verse 27. There's no need of a temple. Why? Because God himself, he is the glory. He is the temple. He himself. Okay? That is the relationship that God wanted with man from the beginning. But yea, hath God said, man messed it up. The original intent with, man, with God was to have personal relation in person with man. And at the end, the final dispensation, the seventh and final, the shalom, the peace, the rest, at the end, man and God are going to have fellowship one with another with no sin. No sin whatsoever. No sin. Okay? Hence, the new heavens and the new earth. Because you don't need it with a new heaven and a new earth. You don't need a temple. And this is also in Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Okay. Beg your pardon. We're almost done. Like I said, this was not the video that the Lord, that I wanted, or I thought I was going to do. But the Lord, through a beloved brother, had other plans. And thank you, dear brother, by the way. I don't know if I thanked you already. but Isaiah 65, verse 17. Okay. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. The former where a temple was necessary. Okay? This dispensation, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of heaven is works. The final and seventh dispensation, eternity, no sin. No sin. Okay? And Isaiah 66, verses 22 and verse 23. Ah, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, see, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. In the new heaven and the new earth, all flesh will come to worship before him. Okay? Okay? Why? Because there's no sin. Hence, new heaven and the new earth. Okay? So, yes, there is going to be a third temple rebuilt. And yes, the temple is going to have something to do with 
uh, in the kingdom of heaven. But in the final and seventh dispensation, there's no need of a temple. Why? Because the Lord is the temple himself. Okay? All right? So um, and th that's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully this has answered some questions. This um, Tammuz thing, the fast, this three-day fast from the 28th unto the 30th, uh, we read already the context of Ezekiel chapter 8. That's not a holy day sanctioned by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Nor is Christ Mass. Okay? Those are holidays of men. The holy days that Paul is talking about are the ones given already in Scripture. Okay? So, hopefully this video will help some of you. And, and brethren, people, you got you to gotta watch out for these heretics like Mark Demes. Saying that you got to keep the law today. You, you don't. Okay? You don't. We are saved by His grace to our faith. Okay? When you got to keep the law, okay? Oh, the law is going to be around during the time of Jacob's trouble. But you also got to have the faith of Jesus. Okay? You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. And the seventh and final dispensation, eternity, there's no sin. Okay? Watch out for these people like Mark the Mess, who want to bring you under the law. Watch out for these people saying, it's very long from Genesis on to Revelation. Watch out. They're lying to you. Trying to damn you to hell. Okay? And this thing about the month of Tammuz, okay, and this fast here, it's a remembrance of, but is it a fast that the Lord has uh, thought up? No. Is Christ Mass something that the Lord thought up? No! And you, you, call people lost for speaking against it? Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of pagan idolaters. That's what you are. So, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this will help some of you. Um, no, I'm not going to apologize for getting a little worked up. Okay? The time that is coming is for the Jewish people. And if you're a black Hebrew, Israel, you're not a Hebrew. Neither uh, Cheerio chap, neither are you a British Hebrew Israelite. Give me a break. Okay? You don't have to go through this time. The time that is coming is, wow, you don't have to go through this time, dear friend. Wake up to that. Hopefully this video will help you to do so. so that's going to be it. Brother, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hopefully this has helped some of you. See, what's coming is for the Jewish people. You have today. You have today. The easiest time to be saved. By His grace, through, his, through our faith. Okay? But see, you have to come to him on his terms. Not boot the door out of, boot the door and then shout through the crack. Nonsense. No. Because someone who boots the door, the door is Jesus Christ. They climb up another way, they're a thief and a robber. Okay? Brilliant there, buddy. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Today is the easiest time for you to get saved. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. So that you don't need to go through this time. Okay? So, it's going to be it. We love you. Thank you for all of you who help us and pray for us. There is a brother from the Northeast who's just going through tremendous suffering right now, every day. Please keep him in your prayers our brother from the Northeast, that he stay strong in the scriptures and that he ever look unto the Lord from whence cometh his help. And also for our best friend, my best friend, our best friend, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley. He's going to be experiencing a time coming up upon him with great loss. Please pray for him. 
I, I can't talk about it or else I'll get start crying again. <laughs> so, but please keep our pray for one another. Pray uh, our brother from Croatia, who has been used as being used by our Lord as a witness. And those of you, our our, our brother from North Dakota, uh, what a what a testimony. Our sisters, pray for one another. Pray for one another. We love you. Thank you. Those of you who help us and pray for us, we pray for so many of you. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, bye bye. Here we go.